The cops show up right after I get a peek under Dag Horton's mask. They take my statement, then ask if I'd like to come and try the new coffee blend down at the station. I happen to know their coffee tastes like llama spit, but they're just being civil. When we get to the police station, I'm escorted into Mac Malden's office. You don't say. Yeah? Who told you that? Okay. Did you know the guy you threw off the roof? I didn't throw anybody off the roof, okay? Like I told your lackeys out there, we were rollerblading. Things got out of hand, he jammed his wheel, and the next thing I know... You seem to forget I'm a cop. And I'm a tired, pissed off cop. If you keep getting on my nerves, I can put you in a drunk tank. I can do this whole thing again tomorrow. So, you chase the guy up to Rusty's funhouse. Then what? Well, there was a black avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him and we struggled, but he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran from the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy, you can go. Your story matches up. That's right. There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're going to want to talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. One more thing. Oh. Man, this is not what you're going to tell me. Stick around in town. We might have to ask you some more questions. How many times have you told me that of last 10 years? This case is getting way too complicated. There's a connection between Horton, the NSA, and the box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. But what is it? The NSA getting involved worries me. And then there's that gorgeous woman who got me off the hook. Who's she? I guess I need a plan of action. But first I need to talk to Emily and find out what she knows about Malloy. And then about the box Horton stole from her apartment. Sheesh, it's gonna be a busy day. Just the man I want to talk to. I understand the Black Arrow killer struck for the last time. Care to make any comment? Yeah, I've got a name for you. Dag Horton. Thanks for the lead. I'll see what I can find out about this Horton guy. This could be just what I need to top off my story on the Black Arrow Killer cover-up. Yeah, I'm sure the NSA is just gonna love it. Yeah, I know. Well, I arrived safe and sound in Phoenix. It's almost as hot here as it was in your apartment the other day. Oh, I just called to say hi, so... Hi! This thing must have fallen out of Horton's pocket. Uh, this is a tracking device. Maybe Horton stashed the box he stole from Emily's apartment and was planning on using this to locate the box later. 
This operates the way most tracking devices do. The sound it emits will speed up the closer I get to the target. There's too much interference up here for this thing to work. I better take it down to the street. later. This operates the way most tracking devices do. The sound it emits will speed up the closer I get to the target. Whoa, a small device is attached to the box. I'd better take a closer look before I do anything rash. Oh, it's a Claiborne mine. I've read about these. To deactivate it, the red photons must be transferred to the left, and vice versa for the green. They're transferred by using the small shuttle that has three black stripes on it and is now on the red side. The transfer chamber must be powered by a red or green power cell which is lighter color than the others. Red or green photons can be in the same chamber and in the shuttle, but if there's more of one color than the other, it creates an imbalance and the shuttle won't transfer. This box has holes drilled all over the top. I'll need to find whatever goes in those holes in order to get this box open. Uncle Sam wants to see you. Oh man, this isn't about those parking tickets. Shut up. All right. My new acquaintance is a good deal less cordial than the police were earlier. I'm thrown into the back of a black avatar speeder. A few minutes later, we fly into the industrial sector and land by a familiar building. Autotech. I'm led inside, straight to Jackson Cross's office. Welcome, Mr. Murphy. Please make yourself comfortable. know where you are? In your office? That's correct. Do you know who I work for? Well, if it's about that student loan, 
I think you and I could work out a reasonable payment schedule. <laughs> Guy's a real joker, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, did you ever hear of the uh, Graham Act? That's a, an executive order that was enacted about 40 years ago, when the United States was having trouble with terrorist groups. It gives our agency carte blanche when dealing with uh, internal security matters. So don't dick with me, Murphy. I'll pull out my gun and blow your face off. Well then, I guess you work for the NSA. Bravo! Give the man a big cigar. Now to the next question. Do you know why you're here? Are you trying to recruit me? Well, let me refresh your memory. You remember the other night, up on the roof? The man you threw off was an NSA agent. I didn't throw him off the roof. I can't help it if you hire clumsy people. Your actions contributed to the death of an NSA agent. Not to mention the small matter of interfering with an NSA investigation. Now you've got one minute to tell me all you know, or you'll find yourself the latest victim of the Graham Act. A girl hired me to find out who was stalking her. I kept an eye on her place. I saw your guy in her apartment. I chased him to the roof. He pulled out a gun. He tried to shoot me. We struggled and he fell. We've known for some time that high-level drug deals were going on at the Fuchsia Flamingo. That night, a shipment of Euphoria was to be delivered. We had our agent at the girl's apartment to make the bust. Her life was never in any danger. You screwed up. Now, I know that you're still holding something back. What is it? Look. I didn't ask to get mixed up in this case. I'm just a small-time P.I. And all I want to do right now is get out of your hair and go back to doing what people do when they're alive. Well, that's it. There's nothing more you want to tell me. Oh, well, there is one more thing. Your agent found a small metal box at the Flamingo. So you do have it. You should have said so in the first place. Now, do you want to tell us where it is? I've got it right here. Take it. So you bid us to the box. You impress me, Murphy. I'm going to do you the favor of a lifetime. I'm going to let you walk. But if I catch you meddling in NSA affairs one more time, I'm going to put a bullet right in your eyeball. Is that clear? Get this puke head out of my office. I'll be watching you, Murphy. Yeah, this is good. You can drop me anywhere along here. We will. The NSA thugs are courteous enough to drop me off back at the Ritz. When I get to my apartment, I notice the door is slightly ajar. The government boys probably spent some time in my office looking for the box.
Hello. I hope you don't mind. The door was open. Well, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Mm -mm. Nice place you got here. Decorate it yourself? No. My housekeeper just started on Prozac. <laughs> Have a seat. Well, thank you. So, aren't you gonna thank me? You pulled my chestnuts out of the fire the other night, didn't you? I didn't get a chance to thank you because you left so quickly. I want to know why you did it. Oh, I'm sure you have women doing all kinds of crazy things just to get your attention. <laughs> you don't know me very well, do you? When a woman pays attention to me, generally I'm so stunned. I don't do anything about it. I doubt that very much. So you drink bourbon, huh? Yeah, I can afford it. Yamas. Yamas. Sounds Greek to me. That's Greek to everybody. Well, I knew that. Mm hmm So, Ms. Madsen. Regan Madsen. But I'd prefer you call me Regan. Okay, Regan. You can call me Tex. That's not your real name. What is it? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. Sorry. I gotta know somebody pretty thoroughly before I come clean on that one. Well then, um, maybe you should get to know me pretty thoroughly. So where's the box? Box? Yeah, I got lots of boxes. What size do you need? You know what I'm talking about. I do not. You like to play games, Tex. So do I. What's your angle? I don't have an angle, Miss Madsen. My business is my own. I don't have a partner, and I don't like small talk. You're a very beautiful woman. Extremely beautiful woman. But that doesn't make any difference as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Tough, too. I have a proposition for you. First of all, you should know, I didn't just stumble into this part of town by accident. I've been looking for somebody. And who might that be? Thomas Malloy. God, I gotta find out about this guy. He knows all the beautiful women in town. He's my father. Oh. I heard you were asking around about him, and I thought I'd see what you found out. You said something about boxes. Still playing the game? My father sent out several boxes lately. The NSA was closing in on him and he started to panic. I'm not exactly sure what was in the boxes or however many he sent out, but whoever finds all those boxes is going to come into an ungodly amount of money. So what's your proposition? I've already got one of the boxes. You give me the one you have, and I'll cut you in on the deal. Help me locate the others, and we'll have more money than you ever imagined. That's my proposition, plain and simple. You'll probably want some time to think this over. Why don't you call me at this number when you're ready to talk? Don't lose that number, Tex. I think we'd make a perfect fit. Well, Regan Madsen sure knows how to make a first impression. The question is, is she on the level? There's no way to know if she's really Malloy's daughter or if she knows any more about the boxes than I do. I wonder if Fitzpatrick has any knowledge of the boxes, or Regan for that matter. There's a lot more involved here than just tracking down an old friend. And I'm right in the middle of it.